from there now anymore. We're not having them more. I'm going to tell you when I drive that money, but we're not having them more. I'm still Or the phone, or the phone. Yeah. I mean, no, stop, stop, you're not for crying. No, no, you're not for crying. I prank, I prank. No, she a cry. She a cry. She a cry. She a cry. Wow. Eh? So apparently, folks, pranksters have been staging fake robberies recently, as you just saw. That and that has led the police to call for victims to make reports. These pranks have been really troubling, as one young lady was seen, as you just saw, crying. And we've invited associate psychologist and principal therapist at Tea House Therapy, uh, Sonia Winter, to tell us what kind of trauma one would go through in incidents like that. Morning, Ms. Owens. Welcome morning, to Smile once again. Great to see you. Good morning. Every morning, Daniel. Um, unfortunately, as a young man at uh, high school, I was robbed. And I can remember how scared I was. And then I had to go to the police station and pick out the man, which made me even more scared. So I understand that there's trauma associated with that. What happens when you find out it was a joke? The trauma is still there, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. And, and by trauma, trauma is a feeling that you're in severe danger and you can't do anything about it. And the thing about trauma is that once, sometimes when you experience it, it stays with you. Just as you have experienced there, never, for a long time. And then when you see things that remind you of it, you almost experience the event again in a way that is very distressing for you. Uh, yeah. So yes. So the answer is yes. Even though it's a joke, you you, you have triggered an emotion in, in people that can be feel extremely overwhelming and create a lot of distress um in the long term for them yeah yeah uh, just to follow up on, on something never said particularly if you've already experienced that kind of trauma um and you know in our society what's been happening that for something like this to happen sonia it, it can set you back like you've overcome that and then this triggers it again absolutely and you know daily you said um if you've experienced something like that it can be something closely related to what you're seeing or it doesn't have to be so th that's the thing as well you can trigger widespread trauma so somebody any any it can trigger anybody who has experienced something distressing put it that way where they felt a victim of something that they had no power to do anything to, to help themselves in, if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, yeah. yes. You are here to speak about the victims, and maybe someone said, well, it's not really a victim because nothing never really happened in the end. But why would um, anyone, much less young people, do something like that? I mean, I don't know if you can think for, for everybody, but obviously we are giving these young men a hard time, and I think they must get a hard time, but they see this as a joke. So they're, they're, not, they're not thinking that they're hurting anybody here. It's just a little fun they want, and people laugh at them. What goes through their mind to do something um, like that? Yeah, although, Neville, please let me clarify. There are several victims here, you know, not just the people who are playing jokes on. Yeah. The, the, problem is, the, the, the problem is compounded because the videos went viral. So that means that a large number of people are, who have also experienced trauma are, are um, seeing, seeing it and being re-traumatized. So it's not just the people in the, in the event that are that are um being placed in intense distress it is the audience who have seen it as well okay so i think yeah. it's important to know that yeah 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 you wow. know but it, it's, and, and it's, perhaps i would say i would say i if you know perhaps the young men don't realize um you know the the, the distress that they're creating in large swaths of people who would be seeing this and and who have had these kinds of experiences in the past and who are re-traumatized by by seeing it again right Sonia, that's a whole new a whole different topic because i feel like that's too nice. many of us bordering on sociopathic behavior where we do things without any care or emotion of how it will affect others for sure it is about an understanding daily of post-traumatic stress disorder okay so um the, the the problem is that as i said earlier anybody who who is experiencing ptsd as we call it will 
can be triggered by by seeing this video and it's it's an intensely distressing emotional experience to have yeah. it's almost for, for people who have ptsd it's almost like you actually experience the event again yeah. and you can imagine and you and you can imagine somebody going through that over and over again and then you keep remembering it and it has such you know you can't it can affect you and you can't sleep you go through anxiety you have depression it's just a really long list of, of um, really unpleasant experiences that these videos can trigger in many, a large number of people. That's, yep. that's the most important thing for everybody to understand. Yep. I, I want to go back to, um, I'll use the word perpetrators, because um, again, they see this uh, uh, as a joke. Um, were I to bring these youngsters, and I, I suspect the, those are not the only two youngsters who would be doing something like that, but were I to bring those youngsters to you, and said, boy, they might do some foolishness on the road and they might traumatize people. What, what, what do you say to them? What, what, do you, what do you say to them? Yeah, I think I would try. What would be important is to help them with a sense of empathy, to help them to recognize the pain that they're inflicting in others and to somehow identify with it. And also it would be important for them to take responsibility for, you know, emotionally, that for them to hold themselves accountable for what they would have done. So I think it would be two journeys I would try to take them on. One um, involving the a sense of empathy for, for the victims, <laughs> the, the immediate victims and those who um, are affected by the videos as well. And then helping them to hold themselves accountable and do some form of repair, either to you know, find some way to effect a repair in some way, you know, pay, pay a debt. That is to the extent that there's no, um, you know, criminal charges and so on. You know, I, I think the journey is for them as well to, to find ways to repair and, and thus forgive themselves. Yeah, with, and there's with, public mischief, so. Yeah, which is, which is where I was going with the, the, the criminal charges. And forgive me for spending more time with them than the people who are being pranked. And some people might say, yeah. well, you have business with them for, because I do think if we can help them to stop the rubbish, then in the, in the end, we won't help ourselves because the rubbish won't happen again. Um, I understand. So yes. the police are saying here that they want us to tell them because they might get themselves in trouble. But do you, would you agree with that, that the police went call them and lock them up and stuff like that? Because I, I think you kind of said already that you, you kind of wouldn't want it reached that far. But how, how, how do you get them well, to understand, no. say, it's rubbish this and you don't do this again? Right. No, no. I, I, it, to the extent that there are criminal charges that they um, have to be held to book for, certainly, you know, that should see its course. You know what I mean? Um, Delia mentioned public mischief and so on. Yes, certainly those that would be one way of, of, of repair for sure, you know, repaying their, their debt to society. But um, I'm saying to the extent that they are, they are given the opportunity for counseling, either before or after any such charges are laid. I think it's important for them to understand the implications of their actions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. From, you know, even, even uh, visibly see what somebody else goes through so that they could, under, they could you know, they could connect with, with the implications of their actions. So, so um, Sonia, you know, I'm a, I'm a tip person and a strategy person. I've experienced this, this prank or I've watched it and it's triggered some kind of trauma. What should I do? Mm -hmm. Depending on the effect that it has on you. So, you know, you can be triggered in a way that you can cope with. So, you know, you can, you have the experience, but you can continue with your day. You can continue to perform, interact, take care of yourself. It doesn't interfere with your day-to-day -day experience so that can happen that's on one end of the spectrum mm -hmm. and on the other end of the spectrum it can create intense distress for you that can be protracted and impair your ability to function well either in the workplace in your home in your relationships or even in terms of your self-care mm -hmm. if that's happening if it gets to that state um to that stage then you need, it would be important that you see a professional, either a psychiatrist or a psychologist, who can help to treat the post-traumatic disorder that you're experiencing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, I still don't know where this comes from. Um, but I suspect them see it some foreign place and decide to 
to try it in Jamaica. I hope this stops. Always great to see you. Thanks for speaking with us this morning. God bless you and the family. Look after yourself. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Bye, 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 Bye Neville. Associate uh, psychologist and principal therapist at Tea House Therapy, uh, Sonia Winter. After the break, Lego therapy for children with autism.